Wayne Taylor Racing is set to run a second Acura ARX 06 in 2024, but this couldn't spell the end for another Acura team, could it? And Lexus is working on their next GT3 model. Acura has confirmed that Wayne Taylor Racing will run two Acura ARX 06s in IMSA in 2024. Now, Wayne Taylor Racing is no newcomer to the sport. They've been competing in one form or another in IMSA since 2004. Of course, this dates back to when they were the Riley Technologies factory team. However, from 2007 onward, they've been known as Wayne Taylor Racing. Now, this is a team that has had quite a bit of success in the sport. Since the name change, they've won the 2013 Grand Am Championship, as well as the 2017 IMSA Championship. Now, going back a few years, you'll remember that Wayne Taylor Racing ran Cadillac for much of the DPI era. And in fact, when they announced the switch to Acura for the 2021 season, it came as a shock to the IMSA world. In fact, looking through some old articles that covered this news, I came across an interesting quote from Wayne Taylor in a Racer Magazine article. Wayne was quoted as saying, And for me, of course, I want to add more IMSA Championships but there's also one more thing in my career I want, and that is to try and win Le Mans overall. And this, with Acura, is the chance for my team to do it. It's quite interesting seeing as Acura has not announced plans to run Le Mans yet. Now, in case you haven't noticed, I am not at the studio today. I am actually out at lovely CTMP for the FEL Sports Car Canada. I believe it's the season opener for them. Going to be some great TCR and GT4 action. They post their races up on YouTube. I'll put a link to them in the show notes and really it's just great to be back out and and at the track again it looks like it's going to be a beautiful weekend for racing but back to the imsa news here it is kind of difficult to say that the acura switch hasn't worked out for wayne taylor racing though since the switch they've won the rolex 24 a third consecutive time in 2021 and they've actually had five straight years where they finished in the top two in that race they've won the michelin endurance cup back in 2021 and they've racked up an impressive Impressive seven race victories along the way. I don't think there's any doubt that it has been a very successful couple of years under the Acura umbrella, and now they look set to build on that. When you factor in their recent partnership with Andretti Autosport and just the additional resources that that's going to bring them, it's pretty easy to say that Wayne Taylor Racing is setting themselves up for plenty of future success and prolonged success in the sport. And ultimately, it really does show that they are ready for this second car that they're going to be getting. Now, of course, let's not forget that the organization does have other classes and other series that it competes in. They have a very heavy presence in the Lamborghini Super Trofeo series. And then, of course, they do also have a part-time entry in the GTD class of IMSA. And while this might be a customer racing outlet, that GTD ride was actually an also mentioned in this Acura announcement. It was just mentioned that they plan on continuing with that number 93 GTD entry into next season. So, let's cross our fingers and hope that that's going to be an expanded effort potentially into a full season ride now this announcement also left plenty of questions though most notably does this mean that Meyer Shank Racing could be out as an Acura team well if you recall back to the Rolex in January it's pretty well known that Acura and HBD are the ones that actually outed Meyer Shank Racing for their deflate gate scandal and they were certainly not pleased to have to deal with the fallout of that news now, I think it is really important here, while some people might be speculating that Meyer Shank Racing could be out with this announcement of two cars for Wayne Taylor Racing, there's absolutely nothing to indicate this as of right now. It is pure speculation, and to be frank, Meyer Shank Racing has done an exceptional job of representing Acura up until this hiccup at the Rolex. What they accomplished with the Acura last year was great. And they're not only a team that has been around the IMSA paddock for a good little while, they also appear to be a team that's going to be around for the long haul as well. They were also critical in the development of the ARX 06, which in the early stages of this season appears to be the car that has the most pace in the GTP category week in and week out, even if they don't necessarily have all the results to show for it. Personally, I think they aren't going to be going anywhere, and that we're going to be seeing them run an Acura ARX 06 next year as well. I think that the history and the success that they've had with Acura should not be forgotten and they've really done what they needed to do after news like this can come out and just laying low putting your head down and letting the product on track speak for itself but what do you think 
Will MSR be running an Acura next year? Let me know down in the comments. Now, a whole separate conversation is who could be lined up to drive this second entry? The first obvious choice that comes to mind is Luis Delatraz. The Swiss driver joined Wayne Taylor Racing as the third driver for their Michelin Endurance Cup entry this year, and he was impressed immensely. However, currently, he is also racing in the World Endurance Championship with WRT. Now, this could be problematic because WRT WRT is, of course, slated to run the factory BMW project in the World Endurance Championship starting in 2024. Louis Stellatraz, I think, could be a great fit, but another good fit that I see, potentially more in an Endurance Cup role, would be Kyle Kirkwood. The young IndyCar driver has very much impressed thus far in a GTD Pro ride with Vassar Sullivan that he's been in for a couple of years, and he picked up his first win in IndyCar this year. He also drives for Andretti Autosport in IndyCar, and I really think that he could be a great fit for, again, a Michelin Endurance Cup Series ride. Uh, more of a long shot that I could see potentially happening is Jack Harvey. The current IndyCar driver is 30 years old, and he's currently a bit in, in a bit of a hot seat for his seat in IndyCar right now. He does have some con interesting connections here, having previously raced for Meyer Shank Racing, but really, at the end of the day, he doesn't really have much endurance racing experience under his belt. However, I'm sure that if he does not return to IndyCar, a driver of his talent could easily pick up the reins quickly in an LMDH entry, and I'm sure be a very quick driver on the grid. Another more interesting one that I've seen comes from Anthony Florio, who is at AT Florio on Twitter. Great follow if you're not following him already. He has a great thread that I'll link in the show notes below of other potential names. But the one that he mentioned that I thought was most interesting was IndyCar driver Takuma Sato. Anthony cites Sato's strong ties with Honda, as well as with Andretti Autosport, whom he won the Indianapolis 500 with. Look, I'm just saying I think that for 46-year-old former F1 and current IndyCar driver would be a great fit for a full-season ride in the second entry. Jumping from GTP to GTD sees one of the staple manufacturers of GTD set to bring a new car to the grid, potentially in 2025. Lexus, who has been competing with the RCF, GT3, and IMSA since 2017, is set to be developing a new GT3 car. Essentially, it's going to be a rebadged Toyota GR GT3, which was previously announced at the Tokyo Auto Salon. However, this hit a new milestone recently with it hitting the track for its first development laps. The car, which has yet to be named, could potentially race beside the Toyota Hypercar in the WEC when the LM GT3 class is added in 2024. However, even with the class set to debut in the World Endurance Championship next year, should be noted it's not expected that this car will be ready until at least 2025. Now, Acura might be bringing an extra car to the GTP fight next season, but poor Porsche just added their third GTP entry to the grid at Laguna. You can learn all about that right here. A big shout out to all of the Patreon supporters. If you too want to support the show, then you can head to patreon.com slash off in the S's. Once again, though, thanks for tuning in. I hope everyone has a great race weekend. It doesn't go off in the S's.